Okay, in this section we're going to talk about circular motion and we're going to derive an equation for centripetal acceleration. Uh, so imagine an object going in a uniform circular motion. What that means is that its speed is a constant. Velocity cannot be a constant because it's changing its direction. Uh, let the radius be r of the motion. And uh, at some point in time, let's freeze that. At some point in time, let's say it comes to a point A, it has a velocity vector in this direction, and so I call it as VA vectorially. And a little later in time, the object moves to a certain angle, I will call that angle as theta, such that it has a new velocity vector, VB. As shown. Sure. <clears throat> now clearly you can see that VA and VB are not the same but they are the same in magnitude so I can say that velocity A magnitude should be equal to the velocity B magnitude and we will just call that as V and let's say that this object is having an angular velocity or angular speed of omega since we are interested in uh, centripetal acceleration which is the change in velocity by time taken this point is B uh, since we are interested in uh, changing velocity by time taken, uh, we need to decompose these vectors so that we can subtract them. I will choose this as my x and y. You can see that VA is already along x-axis. There is no need, no need to decompose that. But I have to decompose uh, uh, velocity B, which I can do that. And convince yourself that if this angle should also be theta, it's a matter of geometry. So this is going to be v cos theta. Why? Because it has a magnitude v, remember. And this component is going to be v sine theta. And so we have now everything ready and they can start deriving the expression. Uh, acceleration, instantaneous acceleration is dv over dt which I will write as limit delta t tends to 0 delta v divided by delta t which becomes limit delta t tends to 0, final velocity vector, which is Vb, minus the initial velocity vector, which is Va, divided by the time it took to go from A to B, which I call as delta t. Now what is Va? Va can be written as V into I roof. You can clearly see that the entire velocity is along the I direction. And what is Vb? since we have decomposed it, it's v cos theta i roof plus v sin theta j roof. So I can substitute that and I can say my acceleration now is limit delta t tends to 0 v cos theta i roof plus v sin theta j roof as my final velocity vector minus initial velocity which is v i root divided by the time taken delta t. Now we have to apply limits and we're going to do that conceptually. What happens when delta t tends to zero? But well, it is clear that if the time it takes for that object to go from a to b if that is about to become zero then the points a and b themselves are going to be extremely close to each other or in other words that angle theta is also approaching zero. What happens when angle theta approaches zero, cos theta approaches one? That's easy because when theta values are extremely small you can look into your log books and you can see that cos value is very close to one. What is not so obvious which of course you will prove that in maths is that sine theta approaches theta provided it's in radians. 
I'm not going to prove that over here. Just take that as for granted. And so now, that is what we are doing as applying limits. And so substituting that, I already applied limits now. So cos theta becomes 1. So I have V into I roof here. Plus V into sine theta just becomes theta. J roof. Minus divide by delta t and you can see now that these two cancel and what I get now is v theta divided by delta t j roof and theta by t is the angle squared per second which is nothing but omega since we are getting the acceleration along j roof that means that the acceleration is in this direction And so it's clear that the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity vector. Therefore, centripetal acceleration, and of course, therefore, is the name centripetal acceleration because acceleration in a uniform circular motion is always going to be perpendicular to the velocity vector. It's always directed towards the center, C. And uh, I can uh, now concentrate only on the magnitude part of it. So I'll just look at the magnitude of this one. And that's going to be V omega. And if you, if you want to substitute omega is equal to V squared by R, you can substitute that and you get V squared by R. And also you can substitute V equals R omega. So I could have also written, I'll write it over here. V omega could also be written as uh, uh, V equals R omega into omega, which gives you R omega squared. So these are the two equations for centripetal acceleration. Um, yeah, I'll write over here. So centripetal acceleration can be written as V squared by R. It's one equation. It also can be written as R omega squared.